Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about a multivariable inequality called Bernoulli's inequality. Before we begin, I want to distinguish between two kinds of inequality problems. The first kind of problem is the more well-known one, and it's about solving an inequality. An example is x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3, and we solve it to say that x is greater than or equal to 2, is all the solutions and the real numbers. The other kind of problem is about proving an inequality holds over a certain domain and an example is x squared is greater than or equal to zero and this is true for all real x and we can prove it by considering the cases of positive, zero, and negative. But the point is that in this case, it, the inequality holds over all real x, and we want to prove that's the case. Whereas in, in the case of solving for an inequality, we want to find the domain over which it is true. There's sort of two sides of the same coin, but we distinguish between them in problems. So I, I mention this because we're going to be focused on proving an inequality called Bernoulli's inequality, as opposed to solving something like a linear inequality. So let me state for you what Bernoulli's inequality says. It says that for all m in the non-negative integers and for all real x that is greater than or equal to negative 1, the following inequality holds. We say that 1 plus x to the power of m is greater than or equal to 1 plus mx. Now I want to be clear that this is not some esoteric inequality that lives in a vacuum. This actually does come up in the comparison of compound interest and simple interest, but I'll leave that for a different video. For now let's just prove this in an abstract setting. We also want to prove that equality holds if and only if m equals to 0 or m equals to 1 or x equals to 0. And so otherwise we have a strict inequality. What we're going to do is prove the equality cases first. because that'll allow us to focus on the non-equality cases and prove that the inequality is strict in those cases. So the first case is m equals to 0. We have 1 plus x to the power of m is equal to 1 plus x to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. And by the way, if if x equals to negative 1, then we use the convention that 0 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. We do sometimes use the convention that 0 to the power of 0 is equal to 0, but in this case, this convention allows us to make Bernoulli's inequality true. Let's compute the other side. 1 plus mx is equal to 1 plus 0 times x is equal to 1. So we do have equality in this case. Let's look at the next case, m equals to 1. So 1 plus x to the power of m is equal to 1 plus x to the power of 1, which is equal to 1 plus x. And the other side is 1 plus mx, which is equal to 1 plus 1 times x, which is equal to 1 plus x. So in this case, we also have equality. Let's compute the final case, which is where x equals to 0. 
in this case 1 plus x to the power of m is equal to 1 plus 0 to the power of m which is equal to 1 and 1 plus mx is equal to 1 plus m times 0 which is equal to 1 and in this case we also have equality so this takes care of the equality cases we haven't proven that equality doesn't hold in any other case, but we have shown that equality holds in these particular cases. So what we're going to show is that in every other case, the strict inequality holds. So by induction, we will prove that for all m greater than or equal to 2, since we've taken care of m equals to 0 and 1, and x greater than or equal to negative 1, but x is not 0, we will prove that 1 plus x to the power of m is strictly greater than 1 plus mx. And we're going to do this by induction on m equals to 2, 3, 4, and so on. So let's take care of the base case, where m equals to 2. In this case, we have 1 plus x squared is greater than 1 plus 2x. And we're just going to work backwards. So we get 1 plus 2x plus x squared is greater than 1 plus 2x and that is equivalent to x squared is greater than 0 and this is true because x is not 0 by assumption okay so that takes care of the base case now it's time for the induction hypothesis Suppose for all x that is real and greater than or equal to negative 1, um, we have 1 plus x to the power of m strictly greater than 1 plus mx. And that's for some m greater than or equal to 2 integer. The way we're going to go up to the m plus 1 case is by multiply both sides by 1 plus x, which is greater than or equal to 0. And it's greater than or equal to 0 because we're assuming that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So what we get then is 1 plus x to the power of m plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 plus mx times 1 plus x. And notice that I, I used a greater than or equal to sign and that's because 1 plus x just might equal to 0. So just in case we're putting an equality case here but uh, soon we're gonna get rid of the possibility of equality. So we get, let's expand the right side. We get that that's 1 plus x plus mx plus mx squared. And that's equal to 1 plus, 1 plus m times x plus mx squared. And this mx squared is definitely positive because m is positive and x is non-zero. So we get a strict inequality now as promised and that gives us that this is greater than 1 plus m plus 1 times x and that completes the induction. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.